You know, I'm often surprised by the simple things in life. For example, I would never have imagined that one of my favorite movies of 2021 would be a low-budget Nicolas Cage movie brought to us by a first-time director, much less a movie that's just called Pig. But here we are, and recently, I often catch myself thinking about how great Michael Sarnofsky's debut film is. It may look like a slow and quiet story on the surface, but there are so many insightful elements to analyze beneath the film's exterior. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the three things in the title that make Pig such a quietly brilliant experience. Unfortunately, I'm gonna spoil most of the movie in the next few minutes, so if you haven't seen Pig yet, pause the video and treat yourself to some deep character building, masterful cinematography, and probably Nicolas Cage's best performance in ages, if not ever. If you have seen the movie, then enjoy the rest of the video as we analyze Pig. When Pig was released, a lot of people were disappointed that the movie wasn't quite what they expected. The story follows Nicolas Cage's character, Robin, who embarks on a quest to find his truffle-hunting pig after it was brutally kidnapped at the start of the movie. The obvious comparison that was made was to the John Wick movies, where a man goes on a killing spree out of revenge for the murder of his puppy. Some Nicolas Cage fans probably had their expectations influenced by Mandy, one of Nick Cage's previous films, which also involved Nick Cage in a quest for revenge through super violent means. Now, Pig is definitely not John Wick, nor is it Mandy. Where these films clearly feature lots of ultra violent action, Pig is more like a character driven adventure film with barely any action scenes and very little violence. If anything, Pig is the anti-John Wick, and to me, it's a commentary on anti-violence. Let's break this down. In the movie, Robin is visibly upset when his pig gets kidnapped, and throughout the film, we see that he goes to great lengths in an effort to find her. If this was a revenge movie, we'd expect Nick Cage to have one of his famous meltdowns and beat the crap out of every suspect he finds. But that just never happens. As a matter of fact, Robin has five separate opportunities to use violence on someone in order to exact retribution. Once when he finds the lowlifes who physically kidnapped his pig, another time when he himself gets beaten to a pulp so he can find out what his pig was used for, this scene where he confronts the hit chef of the restaurant, once when he meets the film's antagonist who authorized the kidnapping of his pig, and finally one more time when Amir confesses that he was the one who originally gave away Robin's location to the kidnappers. In each of these instances, Robin doesn't lift a finger to hurt the people in front of him, despite them all knowing something about his pig. And in an era where violent media is more accessible than ever, I feel that Pig stands out as a story where our hero, a victim of violence himself, responds with anything but violence. We see him use words, as well as his gentleness, combined with his unwavering focus to bring him closer and closer to finding his pig. Pig is living proof of two important lessons. One, that you can solve problems without raising your fists or your voice. And two, that you can make a great movie by doing so. The idea of image or personal identity is ever present in the movie as well, and is most clearly demonstrated by the character of Amir, Robin's companion for most of the film. Amir is the son of Portland's richest restaurant tycoon, and when we first meet him, he's trying desperately to be a successful food businessman, trying to step out of the large shadow of his father, who is unsupportive of his son's efforts. He wants to deal in rare foods and fine dining, but he doesn't have the credentials, so he compensates for that by trying to look and sound as sophisticated as possible. Everything he does only serves to maintain this image of himself, this new personal identity. He wears fancy clothes, drives an expensive car, even listens to pretentious lectures on classical music. Amir feels that his forced lifestyle will somehow make up for his perceived inadequacy, maybe even convert him into the confident, successful person he wants to be, when in actual fact, this lifestyle prevents him from being the most genuine version of himself. 
He's afraid of being seen in the city with Robin, who by contrast could not care less about his appearance, and thus acts as a really effective foil to Amir. We see this clearly through the simple fact that Robin doesn't change his clothes, nor does he wipe the blood off his face throughout the entire film. This rugged, almost vagrant-like appearance is juxtaposed really well against the cleanliness and superficiality of locations such as Amir's apartment or Chef Finway's restaurant. But Robin is so laser-focused on his goal that he just doesn't care. In fact, he cares just enough to call Amir out on his behavior, while sharing his own opinion about whether all of this actually matters. By the end of the film, Amir's experience over the past two days with Robin has deeply affected him. It has broken Amir's facade and he takes his first steps towards reclaiming his own identity, symbolized when he turns off the recording of the classical music lecture from earlier in the film. There are many obvious parallels with this commentary of personal identity and people in the real world. In many social settings, it's easier than ever before to construe our personal identity to fit whatever we believe to be the most respected social norm. To stretch it a bit further, as social media and technology allow us more opportunities to live our lives online, personal branding and status have become critical elements to how people perceive us, and hence, how we perceive ourselves. And in a way, many of us are not too different from Amir, trying to make our way up in the world by hiding who we really are and showing the world the best versions of our material selves. Now, Pig is a story about many things, depending on how you interpret it. But above all, Pig is a story about grief, specifically how someone copes with grief, comes to terms with tragedy, and learns to move on. And what's amazing about this movie is how it slowly reveals this central theme. At the start of the movie, Robin plays a recording of a woman's voice on his radio, but cannot bring himself to listen to it. Let's keep this scene in mind it's very important. When his pig is kidnapped, we're led to believe that Robin is hellbent on finding his pig because he needs her to find truffles. But it's revealed that Robin can actually find truffles all on his own. And the reason he wants to find his pig is simply because... I love her. This is a very telling line, because it is the key to understanding exactly what Robin is going through in this film. When he says he loves his pig, Robin is actually referring to his late wife. Without anyone ever saying it, it's implied that Robin used to be a legendary chef in Portland, but when his wife Lori died, Robin was struck with grief, walking away from the restaurant business and living out the rest of his days in the woods. His pig is a metaphor for the memory of his wife, the only thing Robin has left of her, and something he's painfully held on to for all these years. Here is the only time I believe Pig shares something in common with John Wick, whose puppy was the last thing John had left of his deceased wife as well. In Pig, Robin believes that finding his pig will allow him to preserve his love for his wife, something he unhealthily refuses to let go of. This, I think, is why the ending of the movie is so bittersweet. Although we find out that Robin's pig had tragically died, it finally forces Robin to let out his anguish and grief. It forces him to come to terms with the fact that his wife is really gone. And despite his sadness, we slowly see Robin taking his first steps on the road to acceptance, and then to recovery. By the end of the film, Robin replays the tape recording of his wife again. But this time, he lets it play the whole way through. And as the credits roll, we understand that this is not necessarily the end of Robin's grief, but the potential beginning of a fresh new stage of his life. It's symbolic actions like this that make Pig such a powerful film, subtle enough in its intentions, but also clear in its execution. Pig utilizes Nicolas Cage's superb performance to produce a rare showcase of anti-violence, identity, grief, but also hope. And while I'm almost certain that this film is too small to make a big Oscar run, I think it's cinema at its finest, and it will live long in my personal memory as one of the best films of its release year. Hey 
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and that you learned something new. If you have seen Pig, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'd love to start a discussion. I will be back with a new video soon. So until next time, have a great week ahead. Stay hyped and I'll see you next time.